Well, he's there again on pole position. Jim Edwards Jr., Stuart Clark alongside him, Daniel Buxton third and Martin Johnson fourth on a damp but drying track. Rick Pearson and David Gibson line up on row three and Fraser Powell and David Davies complete the top eight. And a good start from Stuart Clark on the outside of the front row. Gets his nose alongside Jim Edwards Jr. as they head down to Old Hall Corner. And a demon star from David Gibson. Started from eighth and storms up the pit wall. But at the head of the field, a new leader already. Stuart Clark in the red car from Jim Edwards Jr. And spinners, Daniel Buxton. Oh, and Simon Clark and Graham Holmes. He puts it into the barrier. And that is a sign of how slippery this track is. On board with David Davies. Great. Oh, and he's thrown his great start away. A complete 360 into the gravel trap. He's kept the engine going, though. Gets the car back onto the track. But he is right out at the tail end of the field. And this track, very, very slippy indeed. The sun has only just come out and a great move there. David Gibson up into second place. But fighting back, Jim Edwards Jr. is not going to give that place away. He's back up into second place now. All the time that is going on, though, Stuart Clark extending his advantage. Now it's Jim Edwards Jr. Third place, David Gibson. Martin Johnson in the number 19 car in fourth place, ahead of the green car of Peter Sowerby. And then Henry Taylor in sixth. And a great piece of late braking there. David Gibson just slips down the inside of Jim Edwards Jr. And the man from Tarpley and Cheshire racing on his home track doing a superb job moving up into second place. Now, can he do anything about Stuart Clark in that Mardi Gras motorsport car? Mardi Gras, the team which with Andy Prio dominated the Renault Spider Cup last year, still to win in the Renault Clios, and battles going on all the way down the field, 24th and 25th. Oh, and a nudge on the tail of Graham Oliver's car, and that is a heavy impact into the tire wall. Battle for fourth and fifth place is Martin Johnson and Peter Sowerby locked together and only seconds separating these two men. Martin Johnson still classed as a novice driver, still to complete. Oh, and yet more spinners. Gary Townsend, Chris Omeftis, David Pierce all mixed up in that. Jan Prowse moves up to eighth place now as a result and Jason Templeman is fighting to regain the ground that he lost there with that big sideways moment. Closing in very rapidly and someone else goes for a spin. Car number 27, Gary Townsend spins again. Oh, and the very aggressive Jason Templeman there bashes down the side of Jan Prowse's car. Prowse's car, broken suspension by the look of it, grinds to a halt down at the outside of Island Bend. All action down the pack. Johnson, Sowerby and Henry Taylor fighting for fourth, fifth and sixth positions. But it's still Stuart Clark leading David Gibson at the head of this pack. And the slippery track conditions still damp in patches on this. The car's all running on slick, untreaded tyres. Needing to get the temperature into the tyres and one or two of the drivers paying the penalty for pushing too hard too soon. But now Stuart Clark and David Gibson got their tyres right up to the optimum temperature. Edwards Jr. is still sitting there very comfortably in third place. He'll be happy to get those points. And that's beautifully judged late on the brakes by David Gibson into Lodge Corner. The man who lives just a few miles from Walton Park knows this circuit intimately, looks across to his left side, sees the red car is still there, he knows he has to move across, take the line, now he does it, carves across the nose of number 17, Stuart Clark, into Old Hall Corner, and that was the most perfectly judged overtaking manoeuvre, no contact, inch perfect, both the drivers right on the limit, that is what one make racing is all about. Through Denton's, down to Cascades, down the hill, and dropping now down towards the lake, and Island Hairpin, as we see a replay of that shunt for Graham Oliver, just gets nipped on the back. Maybe something breaks on the car because the car literally goes straight on. In fact, it wasn't even a nudge. The car just flew across the grass, the front wheels locked, and head on into the barrier at 60 miles an hour there. And, well, you can see him very shaken up inside. The marshal's still working down at that car. And the officials, well, quite rightly, have hung the yellow flags out. There is a safety car leaving the pit lane. It'll appear just ahead of the cars just now. There it is. And the cars all slowing now in formation. Stuart Clark tucking in behind David Gibson and the safety car out while the marshals attend to Graham Oliver. The good news is that Graham is shaken but not stirred inside that car. They're just easing him out as a precaution in case he's got whiplash injuries. But there you see the marshals and the doctor at work making sure that he's removed from the car. Yes, as safely as possible. Out of the car now, the safety car lights are off. 
and the man in car number one, David Gibson, has to remember that his tyres have cooled down at the start of this. All the drivers now have got to push very gently indeed. And the man putting the real pressure on Zedwards Jr. trying to go around the outside of Stuart Clark. And David Gibson holds on nice and tidy at the head of the pack. The green car of Peter Sauber is still there in fourth place, dropping down through Dentons, down to Cascades. Oh, and there's the penalty, pushing too hard on cold tyres. David Gibson just throws it into the gravel trap. Well, what a disappointment. You can see him punching the steering wheel there with disgust. Off on his home circuit, and that is a great piece of late braking. David Davies from Bridgend back up into eighth place. Adrian Churchill comes back down the inside of it, down to ninth again. It's going to be neck and neck over the crest. Davies has the inside line for the Nickerbrook chicane. Up into top gear now. Is he going to be able to hold him on the brakes? Churchill, though, is just going to be able to get his nose. No, Churchill's going to be kept out high, wide, and handsome. Absolutely brilliantly judged. And David Davies is in fighting form after that spin on the opening lap. Back up into eighth position. Now closing in on Fraser Powell in car number 16. But at the head of the pack, Stuart Clark inheriting that victory. It will do just very nicely indeed. Edwards Jr. in second place. Peter Sowerby third. Martin Johnson in fourth. Ahead of Henry Taylor, Matt Jackson, Fraser Powell and David Davies. And Davies really is motoring. Look at this down the straight. Down the inside of Powell's Pink Panther. Down the box, nice and tidy on the brakes. A few creaks and moans from the suspension in the burrow clear. He's had a hard time today. Stuart Clark heads Edwards Jr. across the line. Edwards Jr. looks at making a move, but just tucks back into the slipstream for the moment. And don't forget, Jim Edwards Jr. wants... In fact, the car's slowing again. Hand in the air for Stuart Clark as the safety car scrambled for a second time. And that would be because David Gibson's car is stranded right on the edge of the gravel trap. There you see it, the cold tyres just break traction, absolutely nothing he could do. And then, unfortunately, beaches itself very deep in the gravel, no way of getting out. David Davies out of the race. Now, the race back on again, Stuart Clark in the race lead, but looking out and getting the slingshot through the green flag. Edwards Jr. timing this to perfection, and Stuart Clark can't do anything about it. Tries to keep up the momentum, though, because he's got Peter Sowerby right on his exhaust pipe. Martin Johnson's on Sowerby's pipe. Henry Taylor right up with them as well. And this is a real six-car scrum. And at the back of that scrum now, Matt Jackson and David Davies. Oh, and going sideways, and a big, big fishtail for David Davies. Spins across the back. Fraser Powell takes avoiding action. And somehow everybody missed him, gets back onto the track, and would you believe he's going to have to do it all again? Well, from last place up to eighth, back down now to 16th position for David Davies. Let's take another look at that. There you see the same thing, a little bit of a nudge in this case. Huge monster fish tail, one lock, then the other, then the other again, almost all the way around. Down the gearbox, keeps the engine pulling to keep the nose ahead of the back wheels. Bounces his way back onto the tarmac, but everybody has flashed by, and he's now back down at the tail of the pack. Great action, though. Edwards still leads from Clark, then Sowerby and Taylor. The green plays the silver. Number 19, Johnson ahead of Jackson. Churchill now in seventh place, and Fraser Powell in the Pink Panther, and a great... Whoa! That is Matt Jackson going off. Oh, that is a huge impact. Well, Matt Jackson from Henley and Arden. The car still rolling. It's gone cross-eyed at the front, literally with a broken steering. Most of the right side of the car caved in there. Contact with Martin Johnson, flicking him into the barrier at well over 100 miles an hour. A great testament to the strength of these Renault Sport Clios that he is out of the car already OK. Let's take another look at that. Battle for fifth and sixth places. Martin Johnson there just tips Jackson's car into the spin. Front end impact, side impact, onto its side, onto its roof, back onto its wheels. The roll cage, though, has taken absolutely everything. The body panels have caved in, but just look how that roll cage has protected the driver as he wipes off the rear view mirror, the last little bit of damage on the end of the Armco. Battle for third place now. Peter Sowerby from Harmston, Henry Taylor from Battle in Sussex. And this is a battle royal as well. And they are closing in on second place, Stuart Clark. And it's the red car now in second place. The green car third, the silver car fourth. But it's the silver and blue car extending its lead at the head of the field. Jim Edwards Jr. once again, the championship leader, looking very good indeed. But the real battle on now, third and fourth. Sowerby and Taylor 
And at the moment, it's still Peter Sowerby from Harmston in the bright green car. Kermit the Frog battles the yellow and silver car, car number 88 of Henry Taylor from Sussex, always in the thick of the action. And these two's battle is taking a bit of the pressure off Stuart Clark at the moment, but Jim Edwards Jr., he is looking very, very good indeed. And this will be another maximum point. And once again, the hard charger of them all, David Davies, closing up on Chris Ameftis and the yellow car of Daniel Buxton. Ameftis runs wide, gets late on the power, and straight away, Davies up alongside. And now he's right on the... Oh! And misjudges it, hits the back of Daniel Buxton cars once. Oh! 720 degrees. And that, we reckon, is a triple axle. And... Well, I don't know what they make that car out of. It must be made of the same stuff as flight data recorders. He is still running. And now the battle second and third, and that is superb late braking from Peter Sowerby. Takes him through into the second place from Stuart Clark. Clark, though, regains the momentum and holds off Henry Taylor in car number 88. And now it's going to be another late braking manoeuvre, trying to get down the inside. And Stuart Clark is going to be determined to try and get that second place back. All the time, though, look at the gap opening up to the race leader, Jim Edwards Jr., stamping his authority on the race. And another great gaggle. Oh, and Graham Holmes loses it. He was in 13th place. It was unlucky for him. And has he kept the engine running? Yes, he has. Cranks on the steering, gets the engine fired up and rejoins back down in 17th place. Meanwhile, Sowerby now back to third place. Stuart Clark's regained his second place. Taylor is challenging that and he's, whoa! Absolutely no quarter given this time round. Henry Taylor has to back off everything, gets it back onto the black staff, but back down into fourth place. Peter Sowerby looking comfortable now in that third place. Stuart Clark equally comfortable in second. But this is the last lap of the race. And with nearly a two second margin, it's Jim Edwards Jr. is stamping his authority on this championship this season. And Jim Edwards Jr. is heading for the checkered flag. He's cruising, the rest of them are closing in, but he knows there's no way they're gonna be able to get past. Last time through Deer's Leap, the checkered flag is waved for Jim Edwards Jr. at Alton Park. Great second place from Stuart Clark. Peter Sowerby crosses the line in third position. Henry Taylor in fourth. Well, confirmation then of those results. Jim Edwards Jr. taking the victory by a 1.69 second margin. A tremendous race on track conditions which were absolutely treacherous in the opening stages. Conditions as they were, slightly damp in places. We all ventured in there into the unknown really and basically the backs were very lively. Daniel, I saw him and mirrors go off. Um, uh, it was very tricky for the first couple of laps and then obviously with the safety cars coming out a couple of times it had the tyres to cool down so you had to be cautious every time we started the game but uh, obviously I you know, obviously came through the carnage so to speak and, and won it. Well, the pride of Jim Edwards Jr., very obvious indeed. And just look at that margin. Really now, Daniel Buxton, Jim Edwards Sr., Rick Pearson, Henry Taylor and David Gibson are fighting for second. And the top step of the podium, well, for all three of the drivers, well-deserved after the Clio action. Eight.